um, getting away from the large whales and talking about some of the uh, smaller um, whales, the, the, uh, toothed wh the smaller toothed whales, including the delphinids. The most common delphinid we have on the U.S. West Coast is by far is the short beak, cal uh, short beak common dolphin. In California, our population estimate is about 370,000 individuals. Um, the trajectory that we see from all of our surveys might be increasing slightly during that time period. Certainly no sign of a decline. And you can see that the cluster, from the cluster of sightings here that Southern California bite is a real hotbed for, the, for this species. Another species that we have here is uh, Rizos dolphin. Um, Rizos dolphin has a really unusual distribution within California. There's this tight cluster of animals associated with the Channel Islands. There's this cluster of animals in the central California coastline. It looked like uh, somebody gave them a map of the National Marine Sanctuary and said, uh, you, can, you can live there. <laughs> and then there's the, all these offshore animals that uh, found all the way up the coast of Washington. And we think that something is going on with the populations of these. Um, we think they're quite distinct, but uh, we, we actually haven't done the genetic studies on those. Um, they're extremely variable. It's, it's sort of... Um, It's, it's, it's sort of tempting to say that there, there might be an indication of decline for this species, but in fact, um, this species, I think, is like the next several that I show, that in fact, their distribution shifts with the oceanographic conditions. Um, population size is about 4,000 there in California. Another great <clears throat> species in Southern California um, that you won't see too often are these northern right whale dolphins. Uh, beautiful animals, very sleek, no dorsal fin at all, which is, makes them quite unique. Um, but in Southern California, they're found pretty far offshore, at least in summertime. They, they do come in a little bit closer to shore in winter, but most people uh, that do research from shore in Southern California never see these guys. Um, the population estimate in, in California is about 3,000. Um, the real center is actually, for, for their distribution, is uh, further north. And so what we see, as with many species, is that the fraction of the total population that's going to be in California varies tremendously with, with years. So it's really difficult to look at trends of this species and the next species I'm going to show you without considering how oceanographic conditions affect their, their habitat. Another great species is uh, Pacific white-sided dolphin. Um, they're found more, more coastally, sort of very shelf water from central California up north, uh, but they're also found in the Southern California Bight. And in wintertime, they, they come right up to the shoreline. So I just saw some off of San Diego in, de in December. Um, their populations are extremely variable as well. This happened to be an extremely cold year that we did this survey in, in uh, 1996, and we had a whole bunch more than we usually have in, some, in California waters. <coughs> Moving on to the pinnipeds. Um, as I said, we census pinnipeds from uh, uh, aerial photographic surveys. That's been going on for even longer than our cetacean surveys. And uh, you can see from this plot, California sea lions are doing quite well. They're still recover in the process of recovering from um, the hunting that went on through the 1800s and early 1900s, really up to the point where uh, the Marine Mammal Protection Act was passed in 1972. And uh, they've been growing exponentially ever since. Um, the major rookeries are San Nicolas and San Miguel Islands, um, Santa Barbara, San Clemente Islands, and a whole string of islands south to Mexico. You see these jumps in the pup counts um, corresponding to the El Nino years. El Ninos are bad for California sea lions. Um, but they seem to bounce right back. And in fact, our last um, count was the highest count that uh, Mark Lowry's ever gotten. Northern elephant seals, another um, abundant species. I probably should have present, um, highlighted the population estimate here, nearly 240,000 California sea lions. Uh, Northern elephant seals, Populations over uh, over 100,000 major rookeries again are Santa Rosa, San Miguel, and San Nicolas Islands, with minor or minor rookeries on Santa Barbara and San Clemente, but also extending far into Mexico. Again, the, the last count that we've got of northern elephant seals is the highest count we've ever gotten. 
Um, this is a population that was absolutely decimated by, by sealing um, at, in the 1800s. Uh, by 1900, there was thought to be less than, than 100, maybe as little as, as few as 10 animals left, and they've been growing exponentially ever since that time when they were protected in Mexico. Harbor seals, uh, another abundant and conspicuous uh, pinniped along our coastline. Uh, they're not found in distinct um, small rookeries. They're found almost continuously all the way up the coast in rocky habitat and uh, quite abundant in the Channel Islands as well. Here you can see the trajectories of these, also showing signs of growth. Also our last survey is our highest estimate ever for um, harbor seals. Uh, this line down here is the, the Channel Islands, and they might be reaching an asymptotic level there. Um, this line here is the mainland, and the top line is the combination of the two. A little bit about the ecology. Um, since we're on pinnipeds, I'll continue on that theme. Uh, Mark Flowery has a long-standing uh, study of the diet of California sea lions. Um, he collects scat samples from San Clemente and San Nicolas Islands, shown here. Um, and from those scat samples, he, he identifies the hard parts, determines what, what the pinnipeds have been eating, and then tries to quantify that. Um, this is the percentage of the sample with the primary prey. At both San Clemente and San Nicolas Island, the most abundant food item is market squid, uh, lolligo. Uh, Pacific sardine um, is a little bit lower on the list here. Um, he's looked at the size classes from the otoliths. He can estimate the size class of the fish, and he's identified um, two-year-olds as the predominant size class of sardines that are consumed by uh, California sea lions. So they're not directly competing with the size classes that the fisheries are looking for. Um, these are how the food habits vary with time. Uh, I'll just point out a couple of things. Um, San Nicolas and San Clemente seem to be pretty synchronized, um, and both of them had uh, anchovy as the predominant food when anchovy was the most abundant food uh, forage fish in Southern California. But that became anchovy became far less abundant in the 1990s, and it's just becoming more abundant now, and it's exactly mirrored in the California sea lion diet. Um, sardines were quite uncommon. They had a resurgence in the 1990s and they showed up in the diet of California sea lions. So California sea lions are actually a, a good monitor of small forage fish because their diet is so uh, varied. Um, I did a study with some folks at Scripps to try to look at the tropodynamic role of cetaceans in the entire California current ecosystem. So now we're expanding to, to the entire US West Coast. Um, our goals were to estimate the biomass of the cetaceans, to estimate how much they eat, and estimate what fraction of the primary production is required to sustain those animals. Um, our primary source of information was this uh, Barlow and Forney publication, although for some of the species we had to use other sources. Uh, there are 24, greater than 24 species of cetaceans. Um, in the California current ecosystem, over 600,000 individuals. And when you multiply the species-specific abundance by the species-specific mean uh, mass of each individual, then you can get the population biomass and sum that up, and we have a biomass of over 320,000 tons of uh, cetacean biomass out there. 